You want to feel old? 2014 was 10 years ago. And while it wasn't the craziest year for hip-hop in terms of innovation or releases, there were definitely some projects that introduced us to new artists and ones that I remember fondly. So here's a few of those projects in chronological order, and who knows? Maybe you'll be reminded of a project that you used to like when you were young and happy. Starting off 2014, we have Step Brothers, which is The Alchemist and Evidence, with Lord Steppington. This album was my introduction to Evidence and featured some wild and kind of embraceive beats for that time. And anytime I'm reminded of this project, I hear, I hear, oh, you hear that right there? being yelled into my ears. Next up, we have Isaiah Rashad with Sylvia Demo. And as much as I would love to attribute my initial listening of this project to TDE, honestly, at that time, I wasn't paying that much attention to the labels. And I feel like I actually learned about this album from either Dead End Hip Hop or Reddit. This album is one of those projects that connected immediately for me on first listen and still holds strong to this day. Sure, it's not super clean and there's room for improvement, but I think that adds to the idea of this being a demo. Continuing the TDE references, we have Schoolboy Q with Oxymoron. Looking back at this album really reminds me of how much I enjoyed it at that time, but it, it, I think at this moment with Schoolboy Q, his current output's been meh, so I've been a bit put off from his music. But again, this, this album was such a good entry at that time, and now Collard Greens is stuck in my head again. Next up we have Freddie Gibbs and Madlib with Pinata. It's crazy to think that this album is 10 years old. At this point, I was more of a casual fan of Freddie Gibbs and really just used Babyface Killa or ESGN as my gym albums. So to see him shift sonically from that sort of production to Madlib production was wild to me. Because at that time I didn't really, or I wasn't really aware of how versatile some rappers can be. Like you can go from again, the sounds that you heard on Babyface Killa to something that you would hear a more underground rapper rap over. And yeah, it was it was just a wild thing to be reminded of. Uh, his rollout was also kind of weird to me because I remember seeing Thuggin come out like in 2011 and then we didn't get the album until three years later. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, next up, we have YG with My Crazy Life. YG came out the gate pretty strong with this project and just has not hit that same mark since. Moving on, we have Cunning Linguists with Strange Journey Volume 3. This dropped on April 1st, 2014. And I feel like I have an irrational love for this project and I don't entirely know why. But one reason could just be that there's a bunch of fun songs from artists that I really loved and enjoyed at that time. We also got Feral Monch with PTSD. And this album is weird to me, like looking back at it, because I vividly remember listening to it a lot but I don't remember the album. I could not tell you what this album was about, what it sounded like. All I remember is the song that he did with Black Thought on it. Um, another album that I just remember listening to a lot, but again, don't really have much of a reason to talk about it outside of that, is Blueprint with Respect the Architect. Next up, we have Atmosphere with Southsiders. This was another solid entry in Atmosphere's long-running discography. And in my mind, it's kind of the beginning of their shift to a more mature sound like this is when they're like starting to just i mean they've, they've been growing up for a while obviously but you know this is more of a major step forward and then obviously everything after that's been i mean a lot of people call it dad rap on that same day actually may 6th 2014 tech nine collabos with strangulation strangulation i don't remember how to pronounce it strangulation this album I feel released at the peak of Strange Music's popularity and was probably the best collabos album that they ever put out because it felt way more collaborative than the other ones. On this project he had everyone from the label at that moment rapping over it and throughout the project you also got ciphers which I felt really held the album together. Next up we have The Roots with And Then You Shoot Your Cousin. As of now, this is the last album for The Roots. Like, I mean, they haven't put anything else out. Black Thought's been rapping on his own, but as a band, they have not put anything out. And it's crazy to think of it as their last album. And also just to be reminded that it's 10 years old. This album is solid. And while it's not everyone's favorite album, I did enjoy it for what it is. It does go into kind of this like the hyper-violence that is portrayed in music and just American culture in general. So it's a, definitely an interesting listen, for sure. But 
you know, everyone's going to compare it to the one that came out before, Undone, and that one was amazing. <laughs> Continuing on the strange music, actually, we have Mayday and Murs with Murs Day. This was a really fun album, and I, I definitely do remember it being part of my summer playlist that year. Just another strong entry for Strange Music's discography at that time. Next, we have Open Mike Eagle with Dark Comedy. And this project was my introduction to Open Mike Eagle, and I have been a fan since. This album also came out during a time of just new music exploration for me. And, you know, at that time, I think I was just trying to figure out what I wanted to listen to, in ter- like what new stuff I wanted to listen to. And this one was so different for me at that time that I was like, okay, no, I'm, I'm just going to listen to this now. And it definitely introduced me to a bunch of other artists that I may mention later. Next up, we have Ab Soul with These Days. And I don't know why, but I did not listen to this album that much when it came out, and I still don't go back to it often. I do appreciate it for what it is, but I think maybe it was because it was a bit of a departure from his previous works in terms of Sonics that I wasn't as interested and, you know, this could have also just been out at a time that I wasn't paying too much attention to Solo. I mean, that very well could be a possibility. Moving forward, we have Sadistic with Ultraviolet. This isn't my favorite Sadistic album, but it is an important inclusion in his discography because it opened our eyes and ears to differing sounds and types of songs that he can provide us. I do remember at that time I was really excited to see that Tech 9 was on it because that, that was a time that I was more of a fan of tech nine and strange music um so it was exciting to see i also believe that this album had one of the last official idea features if not the last one next up is bus driver with perfect hair having been introduced to open mic eagle earlier in the year bus driver shouldn't have been too much of a surprise for me to get into while i didn't really care for his future works as much I, I definitely hold this project close to my heart for its absurdity. Next up, we have Childish Gambino with Stone Mountain slash Kawaii. I didn't listen to Stone Mountain as much as I did Kawaii, but these were both interesting and cohesive projects. It's also interesting because even though because the internet showed us that Gambino can kind of skirt that pop line, this one, or at least Kawaii, leans way more into it, and I feel like he did a pretty good job with it. We also have an album from Bishop Nehru and MF Doom titled Neruvian Doom. And I have nothing to say about this album. I just wanted to mention it because it came out and was one of the last collab albums that Doom did while he was still here. We also have an album from Flying Lotus titled You're Dead. This album was a vibe, but I would be lying if I said Never Catch Me wasn't the only song that I really listened to on this album. Next up, we have Logic with Under Pressure. A lot of what Logic has done, in my opinion, after this project, has been incredibly cringy. As more of himself has come out, I feel like I've been struggling to find a reason to care about him. But this album was really good. And this is the album that made me a fan. And I just had very high expectations from him since then. So, I mean, and again, this is probably a lot of people's introduction to him, uh, aside from The Incredible True Story, which I think came out next year or 2016. But still, for me, this is the height of Logic's career and everything beyond this has been mediocre, to say the least. Also in October, we got Run the Jewels 2 from Run the Jewels. As a follow-up to their surprise hit, I feel like it had a very high bar to meet. There's definitely highs, but most everything else, in my opinion, has been kind of meh. That's not to say that it's bad. I just didn't really care for it as much. But it is interesting to note because I know that this is some people's favorite Run the Jewels album. And a lot of people who don't really listen to rap, like this is the album that they will always like talk about. Like, oh, like you know how people used to say they listen to Eminem when they say, oh, I listen to rap? This has kind of been the replacement, almost. As we get towards the end of the year, we have a few more projects. The next one here is from Big Crit. It's Catalactica. Up until this point, I was really just waiting for a Big Crit album. I know we got Live from the Underground, but most of what we've gotten from him was mixtapes. And I still consider that project as a mixtape. And this project, while it may have left a lot of fans disappointed because it was definitely more of a mainstream sort of sound to his music, I really enjoyed it. And I feel like it did a good job of kind of blending 
the two worlds. Also on that same day, we got an album from Hail Mary Mallon, which is Aesop Rock and Rob Sonic. They dropped Bestiary, and it's a fun collab album. It, it was just a whole, whole lot of fun. It's just a shame they couldn't save that bowling alley. And the last album that I'm going to mention on this list is the album that kind of caught everyone by surprise, and I think a lot of people really like this album. Like it's some people's favorite favorite project. Uh, is J Cole with 2014 Forest Hill Drives. I remember the release of this album and how wild it was at that time to get a surprise drop from the member of the big three, like Kendrick, Cole, Drake. I also remember it being the album of my winter break that year and vividly remember listening to it just on the way to meet friends who came home for the holidays. It was also just one of those albums that everyone was listening to at that time and just talking about. So it it reminded me a lot of Good Kid Mad City. Like in that sense. And I don't think that's something that we get as often now because people don't really sit with albums as long. Anyways, those are some albums that came out this year. Let me know in the comments below which albums I may have missed and which ones you hold dearly. Uh, while you're down there, also like and subscribe to see more rambling and content like this. I got a couple of reviews coming soon, so stay tuned for that. And with all that, thank you for watching and please stay safe out there.